Hello, everyone, and welcome back. As always, I'm your girl, Candy Washington. And before we dive into today's Kiki, which is Lala Kent saying she wants to sob and scream after the reunion. Again, I think her being so mad at Raquel has less to do with Ariana and more to do with the fact that she has just never liked her. They've, they've always had a rivalry and a beef. I think she's low-key, still in love with James. And yeah. But now it's like, now her anger is justified, right? Now her anger with uh, Raquel is so justified. Like Raquel gave her a reason to be mad. But we're also going to get into the fact that Brittany Cartwright is claiming that her ex, Randall Emmett, owes Jax Taylor over $70,000. And I'm going to get into why I think that is, okay? But before we do that, you know what to do? Go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it when we go live. Also, be sure to share this with a friend because a key key is always better with community. Check out the description box down below and join our newsletter. It is free. So with that, let's dive right on in. So first up, let's talk about Brittany's claim that Randall owes Jax more than $70,000, Okay. Let's get into it. This is according to page six. Brittany Cartwright claims Randall Emmett owes her husband, Jax Taylor, more than $70,000. That's a lot of money, guys. While appearing on Watch What Happens Live this week, the former Vanderpump Rules cast members received a fan-submitted question asking about Emmett's debts to, de debts to them and where their friendship currently stands. We're working it out, Taylor 43 replied, before mentioning the number 70 and pointing to Cartwright. She doesn't want to talk about it. Cartwright, however, quickly dismissed that claim and said she was fine to discuss the matter. I think it's you that doesn't want to talk about it, Cartwright 34 hit back. Host Andy then asked the couple about the alleged 70k debt. Cartwright clarified that the movie producer owes him, quote, more. Dun, 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 dun. You lent Randall money, said Cohen in disbelief. Let me guess, you were going to, quote, produce a film. You're not going to get that money back, Cohen added, to which Cartwright responded, he wants his money back. All right, let's break that down a little bit, okay? Let's break it down. Now, the reason why I think that Jax Taylor sort of, you know, parlayed the question to Brittany, like, oh, Brittany doesn't want to talk about it. And she picked up the ball and was like, oh, no, we're going to talk about it is because I bet you there is some type of litigation or lawsuit, class action, something going on that Jax Taylor is a part of in order to try to compel or, you know, sue or get his money back from Randall. As we know, Randall has multiple lawsuits against him, you know, adding up to $25 million plus. So I'm sure that Jax Taylor is in that mix of people suing him to get his money back. So Jax may not be able to discuss the details of it publicly. And you know how people always say, oh, we can't talk about it for legal reasons, right? So Jax may not be able to talk about it, but I bet you Brittany can. You know, I bet you Brittany's name isn't on the lawsuit. So he's like, well, I don't want to talk about it. She doesn't want to talk about it. And she's like, I'll talk about it because I'm not named in the lawsuit, right? So I think Brittany is being the mouthpiece for what's going on between Jax and Randall because I think Jax is probably doing some legal action against Randall to get his money back. So that's what I think was actually going on there. Now, the second part where Andy's like, oh, you, you know, loaned Randall money. Don't forget Randall and Lala were fronting like they had all of this money, like they had, like they were just bawling, this, that, and the third. I think Lala really thought they had the money like that. But then once the money stopped, she bounced, right? Um, so I think it's more of like, why would Jax <laughs> Taylor have to lend Randall this alleged big mo big movie producer? He has all of this money. You know, he's giving Range Rollers out for BJs. He's going this, that, and the third. He has all these mansions, blah, 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 blah. Why would Jax have to lend him money? But like Andy Cohen said, oh, you thought you were going to produce a film. So it's not that Jax Taylor lent Randall $70,000 plus. This is what I think happened. 
I think Jax, you know, like all of the Vanderpump Rules kids, they all are these sort of like wannabe actor people, right? I think Jax befriended Randall and was like, hey, you know, let me be a producer on one of your films. Let me act in one of your films, right? Because as we know, Lala was acting in all of Randall's films. <laughs> so you know what I mean? So I think Jax was like, let me get a piece of that pie. You know, I'll put up some money. I'll be, quote, an investor. I'll be, quote, a producer. Because a lot of producers are people who just put money in or they lend their name to it or whatever the case may be, right? So I think that 70K plus wasn't a loan to Randall. It was supposed to be his way of investing in a movie that he could then get a producer credit and then also act in. But obviously, you know, Randall's sort of Ponzi scheme blew up in his face, you know, before they could either make the movie or maybe the movie was never even going to really happen. You know, as we know now, Randall has all these allegations from casting couch to, you know, being inappropriate with women and, and minors to, you know, this $25 million debt lawsuit that he's in. It's just a big mess. I'm going to do a deeper dive into the Lala and Randall situation. I'm definitely going to do a deeper, a deeper dive into it. So stay tuned for that. Um, so that's what I think is happening there. I don't think it was like Jax Taylor lent Randall 70K because Randall was strapped for cash. I think Jax thought he was going to, you know, be a big movie star and be a big producer. And all he had to do was invest with Randall on this movie. That's what I think the scheme was. But let's keep going. Page Six broke the news in October of 2021 that Kent, 32, had ended their engagement with Emmett, 51, after he cheated on her during a trip to Nashville. The former couple shared two-year-old daughter, Ocean. Again, I think that's a lie. I don't think the reason why Lala broke up with Emmett was because he cheated on her in Nashville in 2021. I think Lala broke up with Emmett because the money was funny. You know, the money was funny, basically. She saw the lawsuits coming. You know, she saw, um, you know, the the fraud of it all, the scandal of it all. I don't think it had anything to do with him cheating on her. I, that doesn't pass the sniff test to me. I'm going to get more into why I think that in that, in that deeper dive video I do. But I'll just say it now, too. I think Lala knew Randall was cheating on her. I don't think she cared. I think she cared when she realized that the money wasn't what she thought it was. That's what I think happened. But let's keep going. Last year, a Los Angeles Times expose claimed Emmett secretly faced multiple allegations of workplace abuse, including a lawsuit from his former assistant and sexual misconduct. The report also claimed his production company, Emmett for, <coughs> sorry, Emmett for La Oasis Films, was in major debt. Emmett swiftly denied all, out, all at accusations of impropriety and blamed Kent for creating a smear campaign against him. I do not think she was creating a smear campaign against him. I think that the allegations were there's smoke, there's fire. The allegations go farther back to when he even met her. So I do not think this is Lala creating a smear campaign against Randall. That I do not believe. Quote, this stems from one allegation dating back to 2012 that Randall denies Emmett's rep Sally said in a statement at the time. These allegations are false and part of a now familiar smear campaign orchestrated by Randall's ex fiance to sway their custody dispute, she added. Again, I don't believe that. Unfazed by Emmett's accusations, Lala Kent claimed on social media that her former beau would one day crash and burn and try to blame everyone for his demise. And not if, but when that day comes where your truth is revealed that you desperately tried to cover up, you will have to look in the mirror and know no one did this to you but you, she wrote. I agree with that. But again, I don't think Lala was ever in love with Randall. I think she was in love with the life. I think she was in love with the money. I think she was in love with the prestige, the influence. I think she was in love with the life, not the man. I don't think she was ever in love with him, right? So when the life came crashing down, when the money dried up, she bounced. I don't think it had anything to do with him cheating on her. On the flip side, I don't think she's creating a fake smear campaign against him. No, I don't think that. I think Randall, just like she said, his house of cards he built so when those house of cards come tumbling down it's his fault right so 
I, I do think that. And I'm going to do a deeper dive into it. But that's sort of what's going on with them. And I want to know what you guys think. Put it down below. Are you like me? And you're like, yeah, the 70K plus that Jax gave to Randall wasn't some loan that he lent him. I think it was supposed to be an investment into film where he thought he would be a producer and an actor, you know, because Randall has worked with Bruce Willis and, you know, all of these big top people and all this, that, and the third. He thought he was going to have a come up, but it turns out, you know, Randall was nothing but a big fraud running a Ponzi scheme like all these people are, right? So let me know what you guys think. Put that down below. And then I also wanted to touch on what Lala said after filming the reunion. And this is what she also had to say to Page Six about how she felt. Okay, let's watch. That was the most exhausting reunion I've ever done in my life. I'm drained. I feel like I want to crawl into a hole and sob and scream, but I'm happy to be home now with my little one, crawl in bed, watch Seinfeld, and just like regroup. Maybe Sage and Prey and Palo Santo. Are you playing with Monsters, Inc.? Dead in the eyes, like, yes, duh. Anyway, I think you guys will enjoy it, though. So that is the silver lining to it all. Dun, 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 dun. So, yeah, you guys, put it down below. What do you think about Lala saying she was exhausted, wanted to sob and scream and all this other stuff? I'm not sure if she said that in that clip, but she also said it on other places. But. You know, what do you think about her reaction to the reunion? So put it down below. And with that, you guys, I will talk to you next time. And before you do that, you know what to do. Go ahead and like this video. Subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it when we go live. Also, be sure to share this with a friend because a key key is always better with community. Check out the description box down below and join our newsletter. It is 100% for free. So that, you guys. I will talk to you later. Bye.